Hey everyone, it's Lance from Christianity Minute. Well, today is Father's Day. A secular holiday for sure, but one that I think Christians can get behind and celebrate without any thought or fear of treading on any kind of religious principles. While the argument could be had that Mother's Day is maybe a, has a little bit greater meaning, Father's Day has a similar theme, honoring our fathers. Most people think of fathers as these masculine figures, or maybe the biggest kid in the family, or maybe insert your favorite Old Spice commercial here. You know, as a father myself, I'm a little disturbed by the trend in our society of what men are portrayed as. On Father's Day, I'm humbled. I enjoy spending time with my family at church, where all fathers should really take their families every Sunday. Well, a godly man is what us fathers should strive to be. Certainly, the godly woman is easy to discuss, because, well, the Bible puts it really concisely in Proverbs 31, starting in verse 10. But there's not such a thing for men. The idea of the godly man is scattered throughout Proverbs. Well, Jerry Woodfill created a collection of actual verses that he calls Proverbs 32 Man. Now, understand that Proverbs 32 doesn't exist, but Mr. Woodfill is not adding to the Bible. But it's his effort to put together a model man in a small place that we can all read quickly and understand. Before I go into it, I do want to thank you for checking out this video. Be sure to leave a like, and for more videos like this, consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Also, if you'd like to help produce these videos, feel free to donate through the link in the description. Well, for Father's Day, let's read what a man should be. Going through this smattering of verses from Proverbs, as pointed out in the poem. Starting out, we'll go to Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 7. It reads, The righteous who walks in his integrity, blessed are his children after him. Well, I've mentioned this before in my videos. I want my daughter to grow up a strong woman who will strive to be like her mother and like the Proverbs 31 woman, a woman after God's own heart. The best way for me to set her on that path is for me to walk with integrity, for me to walk with God. Sure, <laughs> I have my flaws. Don't worry, that's, I'm not perfect by any stretch. But my heart is set toward God. And I can be an example for her. It's what I need to be. Next is Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 5. It says, Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and let the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. I have to be open to ideas and always learn. As a teacher, not only as a father, but in my profession, I have discovered that I always have to learn in order to grow. When we stop learning, we stop growing. And when we stop growing, we find ourselves in places where we give opportunity to the devil to tempt us, especially in ways that concern the Bible itself. There are certain things in the Bible that take a lot of study to understand, and things that will, you know, a lot of people will try to catch us to sway our faith if we don't understand them well. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 20. So you will walk in the way of the good and keep the paths of the righteous, for the upright will inhabit the land, and those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land, and the treacherous will be rooted out of it. Let's face it. While it may seem like the wicked are the ones who always get ahead, the righteous man always prevails in the end. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 3. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, so that you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. The common picture of a man is one that doesn't love deeply and doesn't let many feelings show at all. Well, that's not the case of the godly man. He wears love and faithfulness like a badge of honor, and people around him will respect him for it. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Hear, O sons, a father's instruction, and be attentive, that you may gain insight. For I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. You know, a man looks to his earthly father and to his elders around him for wisdom. 
A godly man doesn't constantly feel as if he's right all the time. And, well, the old codgers, well, they're just old. They don't understand anymore. No, that's not the case. They have experience. And while not everything they say may work in a more modern time, what they still say is gold. And it can be applied or adapted to what we face today. Proverbs chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Let your fountain be blessed, and rejoice in the wife of your youth, a lovely deer, a graceful doe. Let her breasts fill you with all times with delight. Be intoxicated always in her love. <laughs> a godly man loves his godly woman that he found. And as a man ages, so does his wife. And let's face it, marriage is hard. Difficulties arise. Sometimes it's tempting to think about another woman, divorce, any number of things. But you have to remember, you chose her, and she also chose you, O oh godly man. She's the one who will always be there for you if you stay with her. She will always comfort and satisfy you if you let her. There is another woman out there who will try to take you away from her, though. And Proverbs chapter 5, verses 3 through 12 talk about her. It reads, For the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to depth. Her steps follow the path to Sheol. She does not ponder the path of life. Her ways wander, and she does not know it. And now, O sons, listen to me, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her. Do not go near the door of her house, lest you give honor to others and your years to the merciless. Lest strangers take their fill of your youth, and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. And at the end of your life you groan, with your flesh and body are consumed, and you say, How I hated discipline! And my heart despised reproof. You know, that woman is evil, and she will destroy you. You may enjoy her time for a while, but she doesn't care for you. Her name is Sin. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 20. My son, keep your father's commandment, and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them always in your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. For the commandment is like a lamp, and teaching a light. And the reproofs of discipline are the way of life, to preserve you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. Keeping the love and godly teachings of our parents in our heart will always lead us down the right paths. They'll keep us from sin and help us succeed in life. To keep these things will always honor our parents, even if in memory. They'll always be with us. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32 through 34. And now, O sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, and do not neglect it. Blessed is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. A godly man is one who always is loyal to his father, both of this world and his heavenly father. Again, we see he listens. You know, it's so often the people of this world listen so little. <laughs> they only want to hear themselves chatter. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 9. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The godly man's wise and takes instruction to seek wisdom beyond what he already possesses. Again, as we mentioned earlier, he's always seeking to grow. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 5. He who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. Well, this one's not too hard to understand. The godly man works. He's not lazy. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 4. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, 
but she who brings shame is like rottenness to his bones. This one sounds like it's talking about the wife, and it is. But it's the wife, it's the choice of the man, and a godly man is choosy when he comes to his wife. He knows the importance of this companion for his lifetime, and she's a perfect complement to him. They're partners in everything that they do. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 10. Whoever is righteous has regard for the life of his beast, but the mercy of the wicked is cruel. Well, again, this one's not too hard to understand, and there's a couple other we could go to, but I'm going to leave it at this one. He cares about animals. It's not He's not going to go around kicking dogs and drowning kittens. He's someone that's not going to be cruel. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. You know, the godly man also has friends who are godly-minded. It's not... The godly man is not a man who's going to go out and do childish and foolish things with people. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say he doesn't have fun, but he's not friends with fools. He's not going to go out and get drunk and break the law and do stupid things like that. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 24. Whoever spares the rod hates his son, and he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. You know, in today's society, this one's really hard to talk about. But the godly man is a loving father. Not loving in that he's permissive of everything, but he knows when it's right to discipline his child. It's not just the mother's job to raise the children, and he knows it. Sometimes us fathers, yeah, guys, sometimes we got to be the bad guy, and sometimes we need to punish our children physically for them to be raised correctly. The godly man never does it out of anger, though. He always does it to discipline, and there's always a logic behind it. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 32. Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, but he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. This tells us that anger is slow to manifest. His anger is righteous and never in an outburst or in a fit of passion. It's so important, especially when dealing with children like we just mentioned. And when those righteous children grow old, well, let's look at Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 6. It says, Grandchildren are the crown of the aged, and the glory of children is their father's. The man's job as a father, <laughs> it's really never done. You know, you raise those kids up, and then the man has a new role. And it's one that's maybe even greater because he's older and he's wiser. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 4. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. Grandpa's words especially need to be chosen. All fathers need to choose their words carefully. They have to be in line with God's precepts and good for teaching, and it must match his example. The godly man, his advice is sage. It's well thought out, and it's, and it's based in experience. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 22. Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. You know... He also cares for his mother, this godly man, the, the man that we're trying to describe. This last Mother's Day, we talked about how important it is to care for one's mother. So important that it was one of the very last things that Jesus did. While he's hanging on the cross, saving the world, he cared about his mother. Check out that video in this card. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 27. Whoever gives to the poor will not want, but he who hides his eyes will get many a curse. The godly man we've talked about, he loves his wife, he loves his children, he loves his grandchildren, he cares about his mother, he cares about his father, and really he cares for just about anyone, not just his family. 
He's caring overall and shows that love to all around who have need of it. Okay, well, I'm going to stop here. I've already started to run long. Does this sound like someone you've heard of? Leave your comment in the comment section below. If Jesus comes to mind, well, I think you're spot on. All of these descriptors can be applied to Jesus. Now, the verses about the children, maybe not in the physical sense as far as he had physical children, because he didn't, but they can still be applied, because really we're all his children, and his wife is the church. So, again, does this sound like someone you know? You know, I bet you think pretty highly of that guy. If it's your own father or grandfather, well, you've been incredibly lucky to have such a pillar of faith as that person. Can you be described by these verses? You know, I really hope so. As a father, I strive toward these principles. Now, am I perfect? No way. My wife will gladly tell you that one. Jesus is my example, though, and he should be yours, too. Let your father know today that you love him and always be there to help him because we're all children of God and we all want to get to heaven one day. Happy Father's Day, everyone. That's been your Christianity Minute for this week. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you like this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. I work very hard to make sure that all things said are scripturally accurate. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in that comment section below. And I'll see you next time right here on Christianity Minute.